Chuck us the box. Yes, it is <laughs> Welcome back to Lizard of Doom, I am Max. You may have seen the last Chaos Knight conversion or some of the other videos in this Chaos Knight series. I am now converting the big guns of the Imperium, the Knight Indominus? Dominus. The Knight Dominus. The big guns of the Imperial Knight Army to Chaos. When it falls, it becomes the Chaos Knight Tyrant. I'm going to be going through my bits box, seeing what I've got available to convert this. I've got the spares from the last Imperial Knight, the spares from a Chaos Knight, some bits from a Forge Fiend. They were very useful in the last bits. And I've actually dug out some more sprues, which are from an old Chaos Rhino kit. Uh, so I'm hoping to use some of those. So let's cut to the chase. Let's get to it. Let's convert this knight. Before you do get into the video, this is Max from the end of the video telling you to like and subscribe because I forgot to record this at the start. Wait a minute. Don't look! Don't look! Don't look! Don't look! Don't look! Right. I have got all of my previous boxes here from this army for inspiration. I have got everything I've made so far for this army here for more inspiration. I got my big old box of sprues. Um, this is the sprues from there and some spare bits from previous builds and my instructions. I'm not going to fight about making the legs. If you want to see me making legs, go watch the other video. I'm, I'm going to fight about less in this one and be more to the point because I feel like the other one had a lot of me making legs. I feel like half of the video was me making legs. Now half of this video seems to be me talking about me making legs. So I'm going to get on with it and we'll cut back when I've made legs. Legs. Now the choices are what to do with the armour. So this one has massive shin pads that cover his knee as well. So that's less option to change out stuff because the other ones have knee and shin pad. Even though I kept them the same in the last one, I had the options when I was messing about trying to figure out what could go where. I used the premium bits from my Forge Fiend kit on my last conversion really and they're running a bit dry now. So options I have, I've still got these plasma gun head pieces and all the plasma gun on sprue. They were a brilliant jaw last time, if you remember the other one. I was thinking about doing something like mounting one here or somewhere there, but if you mount it too high, it starts interacting with the body that's going to go on top, so that's a bit of an issue. I think my easiest option would be to not swap out these panels, just customise these panels. So that's where the Chaos Rhino kit comes in. We've got little panels like this, little spiky thing, and there's some have got Chaos symbols on where we could put it on the side here. So this is an option, however I feel this is a little overkill for this panel and it's definitely too big for the top panel up here. Another option I have is again from the Chaos Rhino tank. I've got these lovely bits which I really kind of want to use in this in this conversion. So they could be mounted on armor panel, like a, a big knee spikes, but I think that's too much again. I'm going to keep it simple on the legs and I'm going to go a bit more all out as I go up the model and make it a bit more spiky near the top. I've got these little chaos symbols from the rhino that I'm just going to put on the legs of the beast. Ooh. On the side there, like a chaos Nike swoosh, just to denote it as a new chaos one rather than an imperial one. These are very flat and this is a bit curved. So I might have to slightly bend the star a little bit to make it look right. So I'm gonna give that a little, just a little bend with my hands. Trying not to do too much and snap it, just to make it a little curved. There we go, I reckon I've got a little bit of a bend in there now and that should fit lovely. I think it fits quite nicely. And with it painted the same colour as the armour panelling trim, I think that'll blend quite nicely with the model as a whole. So I'm just going to repeat that over the other side. Nice. Match Impera Chaos Nikes from there. Now the next bit is an interesting bit to me because it's the crotch section here. You can see this one doesn't have a shield like the other type of Chaos Knights have. Usually they have a shield here and then a little gun here, but it's got two guns because this is the big guns. His shield hangs from his gooch down here. 
So I've got this section cut off sprue. I thought about putting little Chaos iconography on the shield itself, but then I found on the Chaos Rhino kit spares, this tank hatch, which has a Chaos logo already on it. So what I'm gonna do is cut away this one and then edit this hinge here to fit in between there and hopefully it'll look like it's always been there. Perfectly slots in there. I'm happy with that. I'm just gonna glue that and tidy this up a little bit. Easy peasy, chaos squeezy. There we go, that's tacky now. It'll hold if I'm gentle, and I can now apply this to the crotch of the knight. Just adjust it slightly. Okay. Perfect. Let me show you a good look at that. With the legs subtly upgraded to chaos, this gives us the opportunity to now move on to the rest of the body, which is where I'm gonna be putting in the bulk of the work. Now, the body, there's not much to change. It's one kind of frame, and the only armor piece on it is this chest piece that goes there. In the last video converting the old Chaos Knight, I used the top piece I could use for this, I think. It was the top of a Forge Fiend, gave it a nice different rotund look, big Chaos Star in the middle. I haven't really got anything to rival that in this one, so what I think I'm gonna do is put a bit of work in. I'm gonna edit one of these pieces. There are two plates in the kit, so I've got one to mess around with and destroy. And what I'm going to do is I'm definitely going to scrape the Imperial scroll off. I'm going to get rid of that. I might even edit the shape of it. Let me mess around off camera and I'll come back to you when I've got a decent idea. See you in a sec. Right, I think I've cracked this now. I have gotten rid of the, the uh, logo off there. I scraped it with my blade. And then I use these handy little files from the hardware store that I showed you in the last video to smooth that out. We've got this nice chaos eye piece here, which is now taking the place of this little flap down there. You can see I've got it the same shape and I'm going to make another one. This piece, which you see there, is from the Chaos Rhino. The Chaos Rhino kit comes with lots of spare armor paneling pieces, such as the little spiky one I showed you earlier when I was trying to make the legs. Now this is a bit more of a challenge because where I've taken the bits off to make this, I've got to make this a similar shape so it does fit there. I'm going to show you how I did this. I'm going to fill in the gaps with liquid green stuff and then file down after everything's built. For now let me show you how I made this square flat bit into this curved shaped bit. I start with the bit I've removed from here. Now I did end up scraping a bit more to make this smooth, so I'm gonna make this taller that way than this piece. So what I wanna do is find out what I've got in here. So I've kind of got from corner to corner on this star, like there to there, is what I'm aiming for to get this main bulk in the body of this flap. I'm going a bit more up, so if I put this at the bottom, then it leaves a little bit of gap at the top just in case. I'm gonna try and flatten this original armor piece down a little bit and then roughly clip where this thing fits. Now I've got this rough shape that's very similar. What I'm gonna to need to do is give it a nice curve so it fits on the panel better, because at the moment we're going flat edge to curve edge. So I'm going to do that to start with. And I did that simply by brute force. It gives it a little crack to get that curve in, but again, liquid green stuff, I'm going to see if I can correct that. If not, it doesn't really matter too much because chaos, that lines up quite nicely now, you can see. So what I'm going to do is start softening the edges with some files. Sometimes on smaller bits like this, I find it easier to hold the file still and move the bit rather than the other way around because I feel like I can be more accurate. All right, that edge is looking nice and round after I've used these files. Now these files are such a low kind of grit that you don't need to really sand it down afterwards. You can paint directly over the work you've done with these files and you won't see any rough kind of grooves or texture. So they're pretty good. I've actually beveled the edge by going like this along the edges of this armor panel 
to give it kind of clear distinction where it slopes to an end rather than just the pattern's been chopped. So I'm going to do that again to the, this new one and hopefully it'll look quite good. The plan is to do this all metallic brass, the same as the actual chest plate, so it all blends in and looks like one sculpted piece of metal. Now the edge has been quite nicely beveled there, I think I'm going to glue it in, let it set for a minute, and then come back, because what I've done on this side, this connection bit here, I've used this rounded file to file a little bevel in there to make this edge of the existing plate match where it joins here and it gives it a nice kind of ergonomic bubble in just before this big bubble in that was already in the plate. Hmm, not too bad. Okay, make the front line, edges line up as best I can. A bit more filing necessary in the future, but for now, that's pretty cool. What about a little chaos symbol there? I'll see what I've got. These are the bits from the Chaos Tank, as you can see they've been an absolute godsend. These are where the panels and stuff came from and the little tank flaps. You've got a symbol for each god here, which is great, but this is what I'm interested in here, this Chaos symbol, just plain Chaos. So let's clip that out. I think I'll attach it to the chest after I'm done all the filing and stuff, because I don't want to accidentally hit it and ruin it. So I'll clip that out, put it to the side, and we'll come back to that in a little bit. Alakazam, back in a jam? With the legs complete and the body waiting to dry for more work to be done, it is now on to the arms. And the first thing to talk about is this gun here. This is the right hand of the Imperial Knight I'm making. What I thought about doing, this is just the basic two pieces put together, nothing else done to it yet. What I thought about doing is putting this Chaos Shield Guard from the Knight Abominant in here somehow. In here, oh, sorry, guns that way up. So it would slide in there. I thought a clean cut here with a saw and pry it open slightly, put it in, glue back closed would be good. But these pipes are a bit of an issue. It hangs too low and after sliding in would hit those pipes. So I've had a look at the rest of the bits from the Knight Abominant and I've seen that his gun barrel is very similar. It's kind of the same kind of plasma-ish weapon. I think it could be a Count's as. And also, it's massive. Let me just assemble it for you now. Look at the scale of this. If this is gonna be the big guns of my army, it's gonna be the big guns of my army. This thing is big, it's bad, and in a fight, it would beat your dad. That arm is done, happy days. The next arm is a very simple build. It's this, it's, it's the same kind of connection the same armour piece and one big cannon. My one thought is that compared to this arm, it's, it's about the right length, so they won't look uneven, but it's a bit skinny in the barrel. This big old chody gun is a lot thicker, so I need a way to add a bit of thickness to this arm. And what I've got is some railings that I think work quite well. I've got a couple of options here. These kind of dozer blade chaos spikes from a chaos rhino. Or these little railings. I think the piece I showed you earlier that I would like to use in the future was that spiky bit that I tried to put on the knee. This piece here. I would like to try and use that in the in the build. So I think these railings are a similar style to those pieces. I will go with these railings and edit them to fit on top of the gun. One simple clip job later and a little bit of filing to thin this base plate of the railings down. I've now got this piece with Space Marine helmet mounted on it, a skull mounted on it, and that fits very nicely on here. You can see the raised section on this gun meets the railings in the middle there. That's why I had to clip out that bit because the, the raised bit was giving me a little bit of trouble. I've also slightly rounded the undersides of this with the round file, but now it fits on there nicely and I think that it's quite chaosy and lovely. And I'm gonna add more spikes of this style so the whole model will tie together. The next big challenge is the head. If you've seen my previous video, you've seen that all my knights have vulture heads because of the Chaos Wardog nice vulture head. I really like it. The previous one I'll show you now. I have converted it using the bottom of the plasma gun from the Forge Fiend kit. That's the bottom jaw right there, is that. And the other one 
is the actual Chaos Knight, but I still converted the head, I didn't leave it as standard, and I've used the same top vulture headpiece from Gobsprack as the, as the other one that I fully converted, but the bottom jaw is actually a hook that's meant to go on the front of the chainsaw, but I, I preferred it without, so I used it as the bottom jaw, put this little speaker thing in his mouth so it looks like he can shout or play Ride of the Valkyries or something, and these two other big speaker things for ears, and I like that they look like industrial earmuffs. So the question is now, how do I make another head? I haven't got another one of these heads because I kindly had them provided by a friend. But what I do have is this head that I bought on eBay for one pound. So that's pretty good. It's one of the Greater Demon of Zinch head pieces. This one's actually blind, so I'd quite like to do something with maybe wires going into his eyes. So that would be interesting. So this is the top drawer I'm going to use to make it look vulturey. It's nice, it's got a nice big round bit on the end. It does look quite vulturey. I'm going to somehow mount this to this is the headpiece. I'm going to try and mount it to this again as I did in the last video, but I messed it up in the last video. I'm going to try and keep this intact this time. As for a lower jaw idea, I have this. This is one of the tentacles from the Knight Abominant left arm. I think that this could make a nice vicious barbed jaw for this guy. I think that could work quite well. To mount this, I feel like I need some kind of MacGuffin, some kind of greebly to mount this. So I'm going to use this piece, which is the end of the Knight Abominant's tail. It's got these spiky bits, which are going to be kind of like mutton chops, and the bottom jaw is going to come out here. I am going to take these wires off, because I don't think they'd fit into it very well, but these, actually, just thinking about that now, could be the wires that I put into his eyes. Maybe coming from under the hood somehow. Right, let's get to it. The first thing to do is de-jaw this monster. It's got a very obvious point to do it under this eye socket. I'm just a little bit concerned about taking too much off, so I'm not going to take it under this eye socket. I'm going to take it with its kind of back end of lower jaw intact for now. Now this guy, I think I'm going to take him off right at the base of the tentacle. No one, <laughs> no one wants to be taken off right at the base of the tentacle, but sorry buddy. Ooh. That literally flew mounting in here. Let me take these cables off just for now. Maybe they'll come back into the eye sockets, but we will see. All right, all right, all right. That, um, that was very British. All right, that fits quite nicely now. So I'm just gonna smooth out these bits where I took the wire off. I'm not actually gonna start gluing yet. This fits lovely in there now. We'll, we'll work that out in a second. For now, I need it to go on the bottom of this. It's got a big, large step at the back there, which needs to go. So, clippy clip. Goodbye. I think that's pretty good. Glue time. Good as I'm going to get it. This pipe has a little bit of a gap in it. I don't think that'll be noticeable in the final build. So, I'm going to carry on. This bottom bit keeps coming off. I should probably wait, but I am impatient. I wonder if I can get it in this gap here. Hey, kind of clipped in. That's perfectly held in place now, that's not going anywhere. No, I've got a problem with it. Because this juts out further, I feel like it doesn't look like a vulture, I feel like they've got an underbite. So this needs to become a little longer. We'll see, even there would be better, just slightly forwards. I mean, I could green stuff that. In fact, I might just green stuff that. I then set about green stuffing the head together and managed to work in those tubes into the eyes, which I was talking about earlier. I also did the liquid green stuff and filing on the body because that had finally glued as tight as it was going to. So I put the body together and the head together and this is where we're at now. Looking epic so far, this is going to plan, I think. I didn't have much of a plan but it's going to what plan I did have. So you may think that this is enough big guns for a knight. No. Boop, 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 boop. This is four more guns and two more missiles. Technically it's two guns in each. So it's eight more guns and two more missiles. This is the spiky bit I was thinking about shin pads earlier. Now my idea, I think, is that fits perfectly under this first little rim here. That's a good idea. Alrighty then, this is our top plate. This is the third and final one of these forehead logos from my Chaos kit. So it's a good job I've only converted two more knights or I'd run out of these. But I have got this one and the eye, luckily, 
matches the eyes we put on his chest plate earlier, so that'll look nice when it's all painted and matching. As for these rather rounded pieces here, um, I've smoothed the top of this one and left this one raw to show you how I did it. I've removed the back inner spikes as well because these mount on the Chaos Rhino tank and I have now altered them. So it fits kind of nicely under that rim there. I am contemplating taking this middle spike off because it juts out right where this dip in the armour is and also the Chaos Star has 8 points. With both of these together, it's 10 points. So I think I'm taking... Yeah, I'll, I'll take the middle one off. Yes, lovely, almost perfect size there. So I'm going to glue along the top. And put it underneath. Yeah, that's a better view. So we'll put a little bit of glue all the way around this rim. And this was the one for that one. There we go. Oh, I'm going to make sure that they both don't overlap that little dip in the armour at the front there. Happy with that little bit of chaos added to my otherwise quite bland knight. Next, I'm going to add more spikes similar. I like these spikes. The one I've put on the gun has a Space Marine helmet. This one here has a Tau helmet on it. And the other one has a little Necron head. So it's like trophies from the battles he's fought in. I think I scrape off his little skulls on top. If I scrape them off, I can then place a spike on each, on the flat part, that will move with the guns. I quite like the sound of that, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give that a bash. Now this is the test whether I put them in the centre, because they should pretty much just rotate rather than move. I think they're pretty good. Yeah, not bad. The next step is spray painting this absolute beast. Join me again in a second when I will have sprayed it and brought it back upstairs for you all. This boy is looking tasty. Not only have I converted this guy, I have also added two more war dogs to the roster. Now the roster is looking pretty damn full with four war dogs and three Chaos Knights. I've used every big knight kit that Games Workshop sell for this army. I've sprayed in black to match the others. I'll show you why I've done this in the next painting video. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss this series. This is a full Chaos Knight diorama series. If you didn't know, this is what the full squad is looking like. Look at these boys, these big birdie boys ready to have some paint on them. Hello again, it's Max from the end of the video, actually at the end of the video now. Oh, it's 1am, but I finally finished the night and managed to film this whole video in one day, which is astonishing for me. So, took a little subscribe down there. These boys are ready for a good paint job now, and I'm going to show you that over a few videos as I've shown you the building over a few videos. The first video coming out next Friday is going to be how to put down colour fast without an airbrush. This is going to show you a few techniques to get your big models like this and vehicles and other things painted quickly. Moving on from there, the forecast looks like some fine detail paint jobs, how to do that with speed and well some weathering and then on to the rest of the diorama. I hope that you are enjoying these videos. Please let me know down in the comments if you are, if you aren't, what I should do differently. I'm, I'm trying to make a go at this YouTube thing, so I'd really appreciate the support and the engagement. So chuck us a like as well. Woohey! Why do I do things like that? So anyway, like and subscribe. And remember, it's not a pile of shame, it's a pile of future fun.